Greetings, Body of Messiah. Mark Pulley here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida, bringing you another teaching from the Torah, from Yahweh's laws and commandments. And we pray that, as always, you and I would both grow and increase and multiply in our understanding of Yahweh's Torah, of Yahweh's revelation, of Yahweh's instructions, of Yahweh's laws and commandments, and that we walk by faith in them and have a heart that is circumcised by the power of Yahweh's Spirit to follow His laws and commandments, to follow Yahshua as He leads us into all truth, as He teaches us, and as He is our Messiah, Yahshua HaMashiach. We just give him praise for another day. This is the first day of the week, a beautiful first day of the week morning in Florida. It is early, so it's not quite as blistering. But nonetheless, I hope you had a good Sabbath. And I'm going to share with you a teaching that I've entitled, What Was Nailed to the Stake? Or What Was Nailed to the Tree? Or as in some English translations, what was nailed to the cross. Before we study, I mean, you can turn to the book of Colossians, chapter 2. Before we get in our study, <clears throat> a couple things we need to, to learn. First, the word nailed does not mean destroyed, terminated, or annulled. And that is the English, Rome, Constantine, Catholicism, Greek, paganistic translation of that word, of the word nailed in their viewpoint. In the Greek, it means terminated or annulled, but in the Hebrew, which the whole scripture was written in Hebrew. And yesterday in our, our fellowship, we talked about how the, the Hebrew people were agricultural people. They were sheep herders, farmers. They were not, they were not wealthy. They were just everyday folks. And everyday folks in Israel spoke Hebrew. The Aramaic was set aside for the rich. And you say, why the rich? Because in order to have a copy of the Hebrew Torah copied or inscribed into Aramaic, it would cost a lot of money to do so. First off, they would have to butcher a whole herd of sheep to get the paper to write on, the canvas to write on. Secondly, they would have to have barrels and barrels and barrels of ink in order to transcribe it. And thirdly, and most importantly, is they would have to have the provision to hire a scribe to translate from Hebrew to Aramaic. And it would take at least a year to go through the scriptures and to translate it into Aramaic. And most people in Israel were not wealthy enough to do so. The other thing is Yahshua spoke Hebrew, not Aramaic. On the tree, above his head, <clears throat> Pilate wrote in Hebrew, a statement concerning Yahshua, King of the Jews. It was in Hebrew. And then Paul, when he's testifying of his conversion, said that Yahshua spoke to him in Hebrew and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So there are two facts that you cannot ignore. And it's just as we were talking yesterday, it's just common sense 
once you get this understanding, until you get this understanding, it may be confusing. But Yahweh, Israel, spoke Hebrew. Everything was written in Hebrew. No one questions that. They question and they say that the New Testament was written in Greek. And that didn't take place so after Constantine got hold of it. And he had translators translate it from Hebrew into Greek in order to support his sun god pagan worship system and to make Yeshua and Paul look schizo because in the Greek when you read certain things in the Greek it seems like Paul is saying he's anti-Torah which he never was anti-Torah because Acts 24 14 said in his defense when he was on trial that he believes all the prophets and all the Torah. He believes it. He lives it. So according to Paul's own words, he did not believe none of it was annulled, none of it was done away with. And then they tried to make Yahshua look like he ended certain things on the tree. Now, certain things he did, like like um, the Levitical sacrificial system. That ended on the tree. That's about the only thing that ended on the tree. And if you read, if you read in the book of Acts, you see that the children of Israel those that were born from above, there was never one mention in the book of Acts concerning animal sacrifices for the forgiveness and for the covering of their sin. Not one mention. So they lived Torah. They understood Torah. They understood that that because they were reared up in Israel, they were reared up in the Torah. They understood the Torah. They believed the Torah. They lived the Torah. They kept the feast, kept the Sabbath. Yeshua's parents kept the Sabbath. The whole culture. And see, that's the thing that we in the West don't understand what is the culture of Israel. The culture was Hebraic. The culture was all built around the Torah was all built around the feast, was all built around the Sabbath. Their lifestyle was built around the Sabbath. Friday night, sundown, boom. Jerusalem, except for the rebellious ones, was empty. People were in their homes celebrating the Shabbat or they were in the synagogue or on the way to the synagogue or on the way home from the synagogue from celebrating Shabbat. The other thing, to understand is that in Israel very few people had a copy of the Torah like I said only the rich had a copy of the Torah because you had to pay someone to transcribe it and so the only way that they would hear the Torah was to go to synagogue and see Paul in Romans 10 quotes the book of Deuteronomy when he says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Torah. That's what the word means. Hearing by the word. There was no Acts, Thessalonians, Revelation, Colossians in Paul's day. So what Paul was referring to when he said, and you have to get this, when you get this, you'll begin to see things through a Hebraic perspective. When you get that there was no New Testament, and the only scriptures they had were the Torah, the Psalms, and the prophets. So everything in the what we call the renewed covenant is based off of and must line up with what is written in the Torah. And so the word nailed, as we're teaching about what was nailed to the stake, does not mean destroyed, terminated, or annulled. That's what it means in the Greek. But see, we've got, we have to realize that the Greek translation of the scriptures is so inaccurate 
and it, and it is so pro Baal, pro Tammuz. Why do I say that? Because they changed Yahweh's name from Yahweh to Lord. Lord means Baal. They changed Yahshua's name to Jesus, and Jesus doesn't even translate from Yahshua. In the Greek, it's I-E-S-O-U-S, -S, I believe that's how you, you spell it, Iosis or something like that. It doesn't even, it's not even a translation. And remember, Yahshua said that he, everything he did, he did in his Father's name. He came in his Father's name. His name represented his Father's name. And you cannot see that in Jesus. But you can see that in Yahshua. You can see that in, in uh, Yahuwah, or, and some people have translated Yahushua. I mean, I, I prefer the original Hebrew, which to my understanding is Yahshua, Y-A-H-S-H-U-A. And so when you see that all our English translations is translated to the Greek, to support pagan sun god worship, you will have a great understanding that the scriptures were written in Hebrew. And when you study the book of Colossians, the book of Ephesians, the book of Romans, the book of Corinthians, you, will, you need to understand this, that those people, those communities, those cities, those towns, were all pagan sun god worshipers before they were converted and before they came to have faith in Yahshua and what he did on the cross. And so when Paul's addressing them, he's addressing them as new converts. They were not people that were, gro were grounded in Torah because they didn't have any understanding of Torah. They were just learning Torah, and their whole life was changed, just like our whole life was changed when we came to Torah. We ate things that we no longer, we stopped eating things we used to eat. <coughs> Our worship went from Sunday, the day of the worship of sun gods, to the biblical s Sabbath, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. We also began to keep the feast days of Yahweh instead of the pagan holidays and the demonic holidays of Easter, uh, Christmas, New Year's, Halloween, Valentine's Day, so on and so forth, all days that the world celebrates as holidays are, are rooted in paganism. And we have come to become rooted in the Hebraic scriptures in Torah. And in Torah, Yahweh said through the prophet Jeremiah not to participate in the ways of the pagan nations in any way, shape, fashion, or form. So if you are a follower of the Hebrew Elohim and you are a believer in the Hebrew Messiah, then you need to continue going to the next level and stop participating in the things that paganism and sun god worship idolaters, Constantine, Greek Romans participate in, and that is their holiday. So when you understand and have the foundation that the scriptures are written in Hebrew. They were written in Hebrew because all the people that believed in Yahshua were Hebrew except for the Greeks and some of the Romans that were converted. And you can see in scripture that they went to the synagogues. Okay, the word, word nailed in the Hebrew means, nailed to the stake means made perfect. Yahshua made the Torah perfect because the Torah 
cannot save you, but Yahshua made it perfect. His sacrifice on the tree made it complete. His sacrifice on the stake made it so that you and I, as, as we were Gentiles, the uncircumcised, can be circumcised of the heart by the Ruach and grafted into Israel and be made complete in Messiah and be part of Israel. And now we are part of the promises, part of the inheritances, and we're going to see in the scripture that when you are pagan, when you are a Gentile, you are excluded from the promises and the covenants. And see, Gentiles, Christianity, church, and churches cannot be part of the promises and covenants of Israel unless they've been born from above and grafted in. And if you've been grafted in, you will not be continuing in your pagan idolatry. But you will be converted out of it into Torah. Now granted, some respond to this quicker than others. Some take some time. But some will be like the leaders of Israel. And they will hold on to their tradition of the elders, their traditions, instead of believing in and living according to Yahweh's laws and commandments, his Torah. So, understand that in the Hebrew, nailed to the stake means made perfect. And Yahshua made the Torah perfect. And salvation comes through a combination of you believing in Yahshua, you receiving Yahshua, and when you do, you begin to walk as he walked. And he walked according to the Torah. He walked according to Yahweh's laws and commandments. He kept the feast. He kept the Sabbath. Paul kept the feast, kept the Sabbath. The early believers kept the feast, kept the Sabbath. See, when you read it through the Hebrew scriptures, you see that's true. You see from Genesis through Revelation, the Torah, Yahweh's laws and commandments, was the main theme. It isn't until... Rome and Constantine and the Greeks translated it out of Hebrew into Greek to deceive you and I to make us think that it was done away with when Yahshua went to the cross. Why did they do that? So that we would receive and participate in pagan sun god worship and continue establishing the religion that Constantine was part of, the belief system that Constantine was part of, and that is sun god worship. Just do your research, do your history. So, the Greek, when you read things through the Greek, it's going to confuse you because it's going to say things like, and it's going to look like Paul was against the Torah. Yahshua was against the Torah. And see, that, that does, it doesn't fit. See, everything has to fit like a glove. Scripture upon scripture, line upon line, precept upon precept. Genesis to Revelation has to fit like a glove. When you read it in the Hebrew, it does. And when I say read it in the Hebrew, I don't mean I read Hebrew. I read the Hebraic translation to English to the best of the Hebraic writers to translate scriptures from Hebrew into English, so we will have a clear understanding of the Hebrew Scriptures. Was it perfect? I don't think so. But nonetheless, it's a whole lot closer to what was truly said than the English-Greek translations. And the English-Greek translations supports idolatry, supports paganism. And gives you a misunderstanding of what is really said. I, yesterday when I taught this, it was over an hour and a half. And um, I'm hoping, I was hoping to get this in, in like 40, 45 minutes. But I might have to do a part two because I don't want to extend it that long. The good thing about putting this on YouTube is you can listen to it 
and then pause it or shut it off, research, ponder, pray, so on and so forth, and and then go back to it and re-listen to it or, or continue. So, to review, nailed does not mean terminated or destroyed in the Hebrew. Nailed to the stake in the Hebrew means made perfect. Yahshua made the Torah perfect. And to me, that just, that just makes so much sense, being that I've been delivered from paganism, being that we have been delivered and transformed and translated into Yahshua's kingdom. All right. <clears throat> Let's look in Colossians. And chapter 2, verse 6. Now, remember understanding that the people of Colossae, just like Ephesus, Rome, um, Corinth, they were all pagans, and they just had a conversion when they were told and taught that they can be grafted into Israel. That Yahshua came and was nailed to the stake and took certain things upon himself and Colossians is going to tell us what those are and nailed that to the stake so this teaching is about what was nailed to the stake to the tree or to the cross therefore verse 6 just as you accepted Messiah Yeshua our master so you must be led by him so we must be led by Yahshua Yahweh's spirit the Ruach being rooted and built up in him, being confirmed in the faith, even as you are taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Watch that there not be one misleading you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the elements of this world, and not according to the Messiah. So right here, Shaul, Paul, begins to reveal to them what was nailed to the stake. One of the things that were nailed to the stake. And, he, and this lines up with Matthew 15 and Matthew 23. Now, remember, Matthew was a Hebrew. He wrote Hebrew, and most people don't contest Matthew was written in Hebrew. But the whole New Testament was written in Hebrew. But nonetheless, it was written in Hebrew. And Yahshua validated when he rebuked in Matthew 15 the Pharisees for holding on to the elders' man-made added traditions which made Yahweh's word of no effect. Because they were holding on to the traditions. See, there's nothing wrong with having traditions. You know, you raise up your children to eat at a certain time, wash their hands, brush their teeth, keep their room clean. Those are all your traditions. And nothing's wrong with them unless you put them over or begin to teach your children that these are Yah's traditions. When you do that and you hold on to them above the scriptures and above Yahshua and above Yahweh, then you are in trouble. So, Matthew and Yahshua reveals that in Matthew 15 and then Matthew 23 where Yahshua rebuked the elders of Israel because he said, cursed or woe are, are you Pharisees, you hypocrites. The word woe means cursed. Why? Because they violated, they added to Yahweh's laws and commandments. They added to the Torah. They made their additions and they taught people that these were the commandments. Just like when people misteach people and say that the Torah was done away with, um, they are under, they are, they're in serious circumstances. I won't say they're cursed, but I'll let you discern that. But they are in, in trouble. And there will be consequences for teaching people, and this is Matthew 5, 17 through 19, that you'll have consequences, negative 
consequences for teaching that Yahweh's Torah had ended. And prayerfully, you'll, you'll have an open heart and not a heart of stone. And you'll not be like what Yahweh, Yahshua said, well, did, Yah, did, did the prophet prophesy of you that your heart is stiff-necked, st hard as stone. Now, like I taught years ago, we need to be open and flexible, soft and pliable to Yahweh's Torah. All right. So we see here in verse 8 that Paul's telling them not to let anyone through man's philosophy or empty deceit or, or tradition of man or tradition of this world system or the tradition of the elders. The tradition of the elders, churchianity, and not according to Messiah. We're not, we're not to let them deceive us. For in him, in Yahshua, dwells all the fullness of the divinity body. And it is through him that you have been made complete. It is through Yahshua that you, you lack for nothing. It is through Yahshua that you are whole, sound, and complete. That's what the Hebrew word for complete means. That you lack for nothing. You are whole, sound, complete. Spirit, soul, and body. For, it, for he is, Yahshua is the head of all the angelic orders and authority. In whom also you were circumcised. With the circumcision not made with hands. See, he's, he's teaching people that used to be pagans. They had no idea about circumcision. And see, Acts 15, when the, the elders of Israel tried to establish that those that were being grafted in had to obey the law of circumcision, they weren't trying to get them to obey the Torah, Yahweh's laws and commandments. They were trying to get them to obey the added laws that... Israel and the elders were trying to place upon them and those are heavy burdens that no man can keep but the Torah You can keep you can keep the Sabbath Once you learn about it, you can keep it if you desire to Remember that he will grant you the desires of your heart Remember Yahshua whatever things you desire when you pray believe you receive them and you shall have them if you desire to keep Torah if you desire to keep the Sabbath, if you desire to honor and reverence and not falsify his name, you can do it. If you desire not to have any other gods before you, you can do it. If you desire not to eat unclean foods, you can do it. You can do it. You can keep the Torah. You can love your neighbor as yourself. You can do it. And if you don't, the Apostle, Paul, the Apostle John said, just confess your sin, and he is faithful and just to forgive you and turn away from it, and he will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is anything not in line with Torah. Righteousness is Torah. So we see here that Paul is teaching the people at Colossae who are new converts. Yes, they weren't circumcised made with hands, but they were circumcision not made with hands, but was made by the Ruach, by Yahweh's Spirit. In putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Messiah, being buried with him in baptism, and by him you were raised with him, for you believed in the power of Yahweh who raised him from the dead. So when you receive Yahshua, when you see that he took your sin and you receive him, you will then go through a process of your heart being circumcised because you're born from above. And then you'll be led to live according to Torah, just like we're going to see Paul did here at Colossae. And chances are all I'm going to get through today is this book, and then we'll continue it in the next video. And you who were once dead in your sins. So, again, he's talking to people that were once uncircumcised, that were once pagans, that were once uh, Rome, Romans or Greeks, 
and they worshiped many gods and seeing that's what all these communities uh, cities towns they were involved in remember in Ephesus in in Acts 16 when Paul cast the, the spirit of divination out of that woman um, a person rose up against him and said that they were attacking the great shrine of the goddess Diana see they were involved in pagan idol worship and here Paul is saying you were once dead in your sins the uncircumcision of your flesh they were not circumcised in their flesh like Israel was he has granted to live with him having forgiven all your sins see he has granted grace to live with him Yahshua and having forgiven you the uncircumcised all their sins and by his mandates he canceled the legal contract of our sins so the first thing we see here is that our sins our iniquities our transgressions for not obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments and we will also find out that the curses any witchcraft curses any generational curses any sickness any diseases were also nailed to the cross ended done away with not the Torah not Yahweh's instructions not Yahweh's laws and commandments but the first thing is we read in starting in verse 8 I believe it was man made added laws and commandments these were also nailed and you'll see this as we go on our sins were nailed our sickness our disease was nailed to the tree by his mandates he canceled the legal contract of our sins which existed against us and took it out of the way nailing it to his torture stake so very clear it doesn't say the Torah it says our sins and when you read 1st Peter 224 here let's let's find 1st Peter 224 uh, let's go find Peter I can quote it but let's just read it give me a minute to find it having a Bible that was written in chronicle order is challenging at times because you're so used to the English translation where Peter comes at the end of the book okay verse 24 says who himself carried Yahshua carried up in his body our sins see when you read it through the Hebrew from Genesis through Revelation it all fits but when you read it through the Greek some things don't fit that tells you the Greek translation cannot line up cannot be accurate cannot be what Yahweh intended because the Torah is the foundation everything has to line up with the Torah and what the prophecies of Yahshua have to line up and it says that he took our sins Isaiah 53 says he took our sins he took our pains he took our sickness and disease which would include oppression mental infirmities mental instabilities um, panic attacks anxiety issues P PTSD is that how you say it mm -hmm. um, so on and so forth Yahshua took in his body on the tree that dying to sins we might live to righteousness and again that's pointing to the Torah Peter was Hebrew that we might live unto and in line with Torah of whom by his wounds we were healed and we can see that healing is consistent through Genesis through Revelation that healing divine healing supernatural healing was consistent now when you look in Matthew 8 
verses 16 and 17, it says that he healed and he cast out demons out of people with his word. Why? To, to fulfill. Does it mean to cancel? It means to establish. It means to, be, to make perfect. What was written in the Torah by Isaiah that himself took all our infirmities. When you understand that the word um, fulfill means to be made perfect in the Hebrew or to be established as a fact, established as a fact in the Hebrew, made perfect in the Hebrew, you see that healing could not have been passed away with. It belongs to the children of Israel. It is the children's bread. And we'll do a teaching on that, that every promise, every covenant was to Israel. Even being born again, being forgiven, being saved, quote-unquote, are to those who are in Yahshua, who are part of Israel, who've been grafted in. They're not part of the church. The church is not part of Israel. Catholicism, Christianity, uh, Roman, pagan, sun god worship philosophies and systems is not part of the Hebraic Torah. It is anti-Torah. If it's anti-Torah, it's anti-Yahweh, anti-Yahshua, anti-His blood sacrifice, and that means anti-salvation. I did a teaching about that, and I'd encourage you to listen to it. So back to Colossians. So we see that healing fits like a glove all the way through the scriptures. All the way through the scriptures. And people use the Greek to say that it ended with the last apostle. But yet, notice, James, who was not one of the original 12 apostles, said, if any of you lack, if any of you are sick, Call for the elders of the assembly and have them anoint you with oil, praying the prayer of faith, and you shall be saved. You shall be delivered. You shall be restored. You shall be healed. You shall be So healing continued. Healing continued. We see it in the book of Acts. We see it today. Healing is part of the atonement. So he took, he took our sin. So what was nailed to the tree? First of all, the tradition of the elders. The added laws and commandments that the elders added to the Torah. Secondly, our sins. Thirdly, our sickness, diseases, curses, our disobedience for not obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments. When you read Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, it said, Blessed is the man who listens diligently unto the voice of Yahweh and observes to do all that is written. And then verse 15 says, Cursed is the man who does not obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. And the curse includes pain, sickness, and disease. So when you've been grafted in, no pain, no sickness, no disease has a legal right to your life unless you've given it a legal right by having other gods, idols, in your life, in your home, uh, in your being. And that's a whole nother teaching. You need to get rid of them. Okay, back to Colossians 2.15. And by putting off his mortal body, he exposed the powers of evil through his person Put them openly to shame. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you. Now he's, he's connecting even more so the tradition of elders. Do not let anyone judge you, judge among you about your eating or drinking or in how you keep the feast days or the new moon or the Sabbath days. So he's saying, okay, these people are brand new converts. He's saying, don't let the elders of Israel that are holding on to the tradition of elders above the scriptures. Do not let anybody else judge you. Do not let other pagans judge you because their life was totally transformed. Do not let them judge you 
because of what you're eating or not eating. Don't, tell, don't let them judge you about the feast days that you are now keeping and the holidays that you stopped keeping. And this is true in our day. Don't let anybody judge you about the new moon. Why? When there was a new moon in the sky, Israel knew it was a new month. It wasn't August, July, September. It wasn't December. There were Hebrew names for them, or you can just say the first month, the second month, the third month, so on and so forth. So he says, or, and do not let anybody judge you because you keep the Sabbath days. Now I want to write something to, or read something to you that I wrote down concerning the book of Colossae, Colossians. Just to go back to the context. This is the context of the book of Colossians. So you can take anything out of it and make it say something. And that's what the Greek did. That's what Rome, pagan, Christianity, sun god worshipers do. They take one or two scriptures out, out of context and make it say something that in the Hebrew it does not say. When you read Colossians chapter 2, it is talking about the transformation of the life of a person in Colossae. They were not Jews. Before they got translated, born from above, filled with Yahweh's Spirit, they were not Jews. They were not Israel. They were not grafted in. They didn't know anything about the Sabbath, the feast days, the new moon, the Torah. <clears throat> they were not of Israel who were keeping the feast and the Sabbath. They were Gentiles. They were pagans. They, they were the uncircumcised. And they were converting and changing their practices or their lifestyle to the practices of the Hebrew Scriptures, which is to eat differently, drink differently, gather with Yah's people on feast days and on new moons and on seventh day Sabbaths. And Paul was saying, don't let anyone judge you or discourage you when you do these things. That's what this book is about. And then it says in verse 17, which remains, meaning the feast days, the new moon, the Sabbath, or you could say the Torah, remain shadows of coming things. And of the, of the body of Messiah. What does that mean? That when Messiah comes, in the coming millennium, all these things are going to be practiced as a way of life. Why? Because they're Torah. Because they're of Yahweh's laws and commandments. Because they are written from the very beginning in the Hebraic scriptures that this is what the kingdom is is all about. The kingdom is not about what the West thinks it's, it's about. It's about what Israel and the scripture says about Israel and about the Hebraic culture. We need to learn the Hebraic culture. I just shared probably such a little, you know, drop of water concerning the Hebraic culture. My heart is to learn, study, the Hebraic culture, to learn more about it, because when I learn more about the Hebraic culture, and yes, I'm reminded by now by the Ruach that my sister Gloria mentioned this to me years and years ago, that to understand the scriptures, is what she told me, to understand the scriptures, you got to go back to the culture in which it was written. And now this is my uh, sister that continued in Catholicism. How could she say that in continuing Catholicism? I just don't get it. But I honor her and love her because she's the one that witnessed to me. And because she witnessed to me, Yahshua appeared to me, saved me, set me free, delivered me. And my sister was always like a mom uh, to me, always trying to help me. I love her to pieces even though she's not here today. So we need to, what I was sharing was that what I've shared today was just 
a minute bit of the Hebraic culture. And my desire, my passion, is to learn all that there is to know about Colossae, Ephesus, Corinth, Rome. Because when you do, you'll, you'll understand through the Hebraic scriptures what Paul was saying. And then you'll understand, like even the little bit I know today, I see how much of a farce and how laughable it is to think that Paul was saying he was he, that the Torah was nailed to the tree. You know, that's just laughable to me once you understand the scriptures. So let's just stop here and we'll pick up this in the next video. Yah bless you. Yah keep you. Yah, yah make his face shine upon you. Yah just continue causing you to grow and increase and multiply in his Torah. May you receive greater understanding. And if you want to connect with me, Mark Pulley, Facebook or MeWe, or you can connect with us on our website at YahwehYeshuaAssembly.com. I pray until next time, Yah bless you. Yah make his face shine upon you, that you would be protected, healed, delivered from any um, infirmity. And I pray for those that are suffering in any way, shape, fashion, or form, especially with COVID or the Delta variant, that Yahweh would, de would deliver you and show you the way of escape, that he would send his word to you, Psalm 10720, and heal you, that he would send his Torah, his instructions to you, and heal you and deliver you from your destruction, from this plague. And Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for giving us understanding in the power of your name.